2021 was the 10th year for the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes theme. There are around 32 sets total, and I'm going to rank them all in this video. I already ranked the 2012 through 2020 waves of sets, so you can go check out those videos if you haven't seen them, and I'm not including poly bags or the minifigure pack. Number 27 is the Avengers Advent Calendar. This was the first ever Marvel Advent Calendar, and I never really care for Advent Calendars as I don't care for all the micro builds, but they can bring in some nice minifigures, like the Christmas Tony Stark and Jacket Spider-Man that are exclusive to this one. Number 26 is the Helmets and Gauntlet. I just don't care for these types of display sets. The Venom and Carnage heads aren't really helmets, but I admit they do look cool, and are way better than the previous year's Iron Man helmet. Then the Infinity Gauntlet is fine, but looks a bit off to me, maybe because it could be smoother, and the coloring with some of it being tan doesn't look the best. Number 25 is Spider-Man and Sandman Showdown. It comes with two minifigures. The newest updated main LEGO Spider-Man figure with the nice printed arms, and a basic Sandman figure with the good sandy leg base again. The build is a simple 4 plus spider buggy that doesn't look too bad, and a side terrain build with a catapult. Number 24 is Captain America and Hydra Face Off. This is kind of a random return for Age of Ultron as a 4 plus set, but it comes with two minifigures. A nice updated Age of Ultron Captain America, and a Hydra Agent. The main build is your basic 4 plus motorcycle that's alright with a disc shooter side build. Number 23 is Spider-Man vs Mysterio's Drone Attack. It comes with three minifigures. It finally gave us the Far From Home black and red upgraded suit, which is my favorite MCU Spider-Man suit. Then there's Nick Fury and an updated Mysterio. Despite its simplicity, I kind of like the van build, but the drone build is pretty blocky with a disc shooter. Number 22 is the mech sets. This is the second year for these types of mechs, and again, I think they are fine and a nice way to get some characters, but I think they are a little repetitive and I don't care too much for them. It is nice though when some of the characteristics can be shown to make these builds a little more unique. But there's nothing too interesting about these for this year, except for the double mech set that includes Doc Ox mech, which is a little more interesting with the extra arms. Number 21 is Iron Man vs Thanos. It comes with two minifigures, Iron Man and minifig Thanos. The main build is a more unique but also weird jet vehicle for Iron Man that I actually think isn't too bad for 4 plus with disc shooters. And for Thanos, there is a decent looking turret with a rubber tip missile and a display area for the gauntlet. Number 20 is Spider-Man's Monster Truck vs Mysterio. It comes with four minifigures, Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, Doc Ock that looks somewhat based on the PS4 game also with big extra arms, and Mysterio on a cool ghostly piece. The Spider-Man monster truck is a very ridiculous vehicle for the character, and I don't really mind that as long as the build for the vehicle is good, but I don't like this build that much. It's not horrible, it's just not really my thing, and it does seem kind of fun with its van design, some suspension, and a net launcher that can lift up on top. It also comes with two good looking drones with stud shooters. Number 19 is Deviant Ambush, the first of the Eternals sets which are kind of forgettable, but I didn't hate the movie. It comes with three minifigures, Thena, Gilgamesh with some cool fist pieces, and Makari. And these figures are pretty detailed and interesting designs, but also not that desirable. The Deviants are weird and unique creatures with colorful designs. This one is more bulky, especially with the arms in the front, and it isn't too bad, I just don't care for them much. Number 18 is Escape from the Ten Rings, the first of the Shang-Chi sets. It comes with four minifigures, Shang-Chi, Katie, Wenwu aka the Mandarin, and Razor Fist. And these figures have nice designs for their outfits, also with the cute little creature piece for Morris. The main build is a generic yellow car. I think it looks alright with a solid look, but it's nothing special. It also comes with two motorcycles, two turrets, one with a disc shooter and the other with a spring-loaded missile, and a weapon stand. Nothing in this set is that bad, it just doesn't really stand out or remind me of the movie at all. Number 17 is Eternal's Aerial Assault. It comes with two minifigures, Icarus and Sprite. The build is just a flying deviant and it's my favorite of the deviant builds just because I like its more sleek design with the wings. Number 16 is Attack on the Spider Lair. It comes with six minifigures, Spider-Man, Iron Spider, two great new suits of the homemade suit and the stealth big time suit, Green Goblin, and Venom. Despite the good minifigures, I don't like the lair build much. It's very open and kind of messy to me, but it does include a lot. From left to right, there's a ramp, the suit display area, a big computer with tools on either side and a motorcycle spot in the middle, and a jail cell with a basketball hoop next to it. It also comes with Spider-Man's motorcycle, a catapult, and Green Goblin's glider, which looks good. Number 15 is N. Arishem's Shadow. It comes with four minifigures, Ajax, Icarus, Cersei, and Kingo. 
The main build for the Celestial Orisham is a very tall, lanky design with a light brick in its chest and stud shooters on its hands. But I think the feet don't look that great. It looks pretty imposing overall with some decent movement, but it's not really my type of build, and it also comes with a small deviant build. Number 14 is Rise of the Domo. It comes with six minifigures, Icarus, Cersei, Athena, Druig, which is my favorite of the Eternals figures just because I like the black and red color scheme, Makari, and Fastos. The Domo is a very interesting ship just being a triangle, but compared to the movie, the build is not as smooth with stud shooters on top and kind of clunky looking. It can open up to reveal the interior, which has a decent amount of space. It also comes with two deviants, one of which is Crow, but both are a bit ugly and lacking, with more blocky builds. Number 13 is Captain Carter and the Hydra Stomper, the first of the What If sets. It comes with three minifigures, Captain Carter and her stealth suit, Steve Rogers, and Red Skull. The Hydra Stomper is another Iron Man mech-like build with stud shooters on its arms. It's alright, but the main problem is that the green color is way too bright compared to the show. Number 12 is Tony Stark's Sakarian Iron Man. It comes with three minifigures, Tony Stark, Valkyrie, and the Watcher. The Sakarian Iron Man suit is yet another Hulkbuster type build, but this one is a little more unique than the regular Hulkbusters having the Sakarian junk design with all of the colors and more interesting shaping to it. It also has a pretty awesome feature to build it into a car, which doesn't look the best, but it's still a great feature to make this more special. Number 11 is Spider-Man at the Sanctum Workshop, the first proper No Way Home set. It comes with four minifigures, Spider-Man in the integrated suit, Doctor Strange with the new plastic cape piece, Wong, and MJ. The Sanctum Workshop build has a very cluttered look, but with some nice details like tools, a shelf with lots of stuff, a black stony area, a bike, and other small details. The other build is a random bug monster that wasn't necessary, but I like the build for it with the claws and the dark green and black color scheme. Number 10 is Iron Man Ironmonger Mayhem. It comes with three minifigures, Iron Man Mark III, Pepper Potts, and Obadiah Stane. It's nice to finally get a set based on the first Iron Man movie, which is still one of my favorite MCU movies. But this is the third and final Iron Man-like mech set of the year, and my favorite of the three. It has a nice design with a more rugged look, and features like a multi-stud shooter on one arm, a stud launcher on the other, and a glow-in-the-dark arc reactor. My only real problems are that the proportions are kind of off compared to the movie, with this being taller, and that this type of set is so overdone in the theme. Number 9 is Spider-Man's Drone Duel. It comes with two minifigures, the cool black and gold suit Spider-Man, and an updated MCU vulture with less bulky wings that I like more. This is quite a weird set, being a No Way Home set slightly based on Homecoming. See, because the Vulture is from Homecoming, but the Spider-Man figure is from No Way Home, and the drone build is not from anything. Despite that though, I do like the drone build, matching the figure with the black and gold color scheme that always looks sweet. It also has stud shooters on top, and a small storage compartment at the back with a gold spider string that can attach to it. Number 8 is Brothor's New Asgard. It comes with three-ish figures. Brothor, aka Fat Thor. Korg and Meek. The build is a nice vignette of Thor's home in New Asgard that is packed with a lot of fun details, like the game on the TV, the picture on the wall, lots of pizza, and a good build for the couch also with a small build for the New Asgard sign. Number 7 is Black Panther Dragonflyer. It comes with three minifigures, Black Panther with the purple details, Shuri, and a Chitari. The Dragonflyer is a nice small fighter ship with that dragonfly design that goes well with other Black Panther sets and it has stud shooters and can be moved into a vertical position by turning the head. Number 6 is Avengers Endgame Final Battle. It comes with 8 figures, Captain America in one of my favorite suits, Iron Man Mark 85, Thor, Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, Big Fig Thanos finally without the helmet, a Chitari, and a micro fig of Ant-Man. This set was a remake of the previous Endgame Battle set from 2019, but outside of the figures, I don't think it was that necessary. I think the main build is a weaker version of the previous one, with it looking less substantial. It has a rubber tip missile turret that can spin around on one side, a bit of rubble with the Avengers logo on the other, and for the interior, there is a laser jail cell that can be opened, Iron Man's lab with a small nano gauntlet, and a meeting area. It also comes with the van that has the quantum tunnel inside, which I do think is a great inclusion to this set. Number 5 is Battle at the Ancient Village. It comes with four minifigures, Shang-Chi, Xi Ling, Wenwu, and Death Dealer, also with Morse. The build is an awesome build of the Great Protector Dragon, which is a very unique idea for the theme. It's more for display being built up on this water base, but it can be removed from it and has some movement. 
I also like the colors for the dragon, mainly with the red and white, but the build does seem a bit thin, especially when stretched out. Number 4 is Sanctuary 2 Endgame Battle. It comes with 3 minifigures, Iron Man Mark 85, a new Captain Marvel that I like, and minifig Thanos. I love the design and shape of the Sanctuary 2 ship. It does seem pretty small, but I guess that's why they put the minifigure version of Thanos in this set, so he could fit inside. It has 6 stud shooters on top and some space inside, also with a small Infinity Gauntlet. Number 3 is Spider-Man and Ghost Rider vs Carnage. It comes with 3 minifigures. Spider-Man, Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider that is great to get as I liked him in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Carnage. The build is Robbie's Charger that looks like a simpler Speed Champions vehicle, but even though it's not quite as good as Speed Champions, it's still a cool car for the theme. It has stud shooters for the engine on the hood which is a fun idea for playability, and fire pieces that can attach to the car. Number 2 is the Guardian's Ship. It comes with 6 minifigures. Star-Lord, Thor, Rocket Raccoon, and what is probably my favorite of his outfits, Groot with a much more accurate color than his previous versions, Mantis, and a Chitari. The build is a massively improved Benatar that is much better than the previous one from 2018, being bigger, more fleshed out, and more detailed made for a great display. It also has alright interior space for all the characters, including multiple seats in the cockpit, and it comes with a stand that can spin the ship around. And number 1 is Daily Bugle. It comes with 25 minifigures. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Ham, awesome new characters to finally get in LEGO form like Daredevil with a great use of the Black Panther ears, The Punisher, Blade who could've used a hairpiece, Firestar, and Black Cat. Also with Green Goblin, Doc Ock with a neat technique for his arms, Mysterio, Sandman, Venom, Carnage, and the rest are more boring civilian minifigures to fill out the set like Peter Parker, J. Jonah Jameson, Aunt May, Gwen Stacy, Ben Urich, Betty Brant, Robbie Robertson, Ron Barney, Bernie the Cab Driver, and Amber Grant. Now the build for the Daily Bugle is the first of the modular Marvel buildings, which are just so great and I love how they are compatible with regular modular buildings. But this one is my least favorite of the Marvel ones so far because even though it's a fantastic set, it's still just a boring skyscraper compared to the others. Which is fine though because there is a need for that in LEGO and it works great here. For the exterior, it has a fire escape on the side, a new stand at the bottom, a place to break through the wall on the side, and for the face of the building there are the news screens with the big sign at the top. There's also action details like Green Goblin crashing through the windows and Sandman bursting through the sidewalk. For the interior, there are four floors packed with details. The bottom floor has a waiting area, the second floor has an office area, the third floor has another office that seems to be for Peter Parker with a Spider-Man picture and a balcony on the back, and the top floor has J. Jonah Jameson's office. It also comes with a good looking cab build and a spider buggy that can attach to the side of the building. And that's not even including all of the references to other things in the Marvel Universe and other details I didn't mention. So that was my ranking of every LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2021 set. This was probably the biggest year for the theme with the most sets so far. But that doesn't make it the best to me with a lot of sets I personally don't care much for. But compared to LEGO DC around this time, it surely gets a lot more love. But anyway, that's all I have to say. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you